Welcome to Cover by Cover. I'm Mike Myers. And I'm Charles Manson. Are you... Are you still wearing the same fucking costume as last week? Of course I am. You didn't tell me to put anything else on. Are you serious? Did you give any thought or the whatsoever? Do you take this seriously at all? realize you were going to be changing shirts. What the fuck shirts? is wrong with you? Fucking put my it's mask on. Good mother... And... Hello and welcome to Cover by Cover. I'm John Kramer. No, no, hang on. Stop the filming for a sec. I'm going to order us a pizza. Well, are you paying for it? Yeah. What do you want on it? Um, you better pick some it. toppings, cause you're a pizza shit. You motherfucking. Fuck. Hello and welcome to Cover by Cover. I'm Jim Varney, and I'm Jeffrey Dahmer. Well, we're here in week two of the anime graveyard, and even though we've been digging up graves all week, we still haven't actually found any damn ghosts. We found an awful lot of cops, though. Some guys don't know how to jump over fences. Excuse me? You're the one who actually got arrested, you stupid fuck pile. I had to bail your slow ass out of jail. Oh, fuck, man, I was just kidding. I didn't have to get so real. But anyway, it's time to fix that problem. So... Get out your shotguns and pitchforks, because it's time for a ghost hunt. You can't hunt ghosts with bullets, you stupid fucking idiot piece of shit, cock goblin, fart sniffing, baby punching pile of ass. As I was saying, Ghost hunt. You piece of bitch! Ghost Hunt started out as a series of novellas in Japan. However, when the last volume was published in 1994, the series was left unfinished. But despite this, it was adapted into both a manga starting in 1998 and an anime, albeit in 2006, 12 years after the last novel was published. While the novels were very popular, the manga and the anime have received some criticisms. Those are mostly leveled at the manga for degrading in quality, while the anime is generally praised by most critics, including our personal favorite, Theron Martin. He credits it with excellent pacing and sometimes being genuinely intense and horrifying. Well, sounds like we finally found what we've been looking for. Now, can you do me a favor real quick? Can you uh, go out back and burn those corpses? You know, big, big well, pile of them in the back. You mean... You mean now? Well, yeah. Just, just real quick. Just real quick. Dude, real quick. Dude, we have a show to do. Come on, it'll, it'll take like two seconds. Just go. Fine. But that five gallons of virgin blood is all on you. All right, fine. Ladies and gentlemen, ghost hunt. So we begin our hunt in the dead of night at a school where a bunch of girls apparently broke in just to tell ghost stories. And they're not even good ghost stories. Do you want me to cover you with a red coat? She answered. Yes. And then... <laughs> the policeman burst through the door and found the girl totally covered in blood, as if she had a red coat draped over her. So she didn't get murdered, spirited away, or possessed? Just covered in blood. How do we know that wasn't just an extra vigorous period? What? That's how that works, right? No? 
Okay then, Master Ass Blaster, why don't you come up with a better reason how a ghost covered her in blood? I don't know. Maybe it's just a shitty ghost story. Oh. No, oh, alright. <laughs> anyway, this is our main character, Mai, and no, I'm not sure they aren't breaking the law just to tell crappy ghost stories. I guess there's worse things you could do as teenagers. Anyway, they're easily scared by a tall, dark, and handsome son bitch named Kazuya. He's so bad. Am I interrupting? So, we were just telling ghost stories. I see. Well, maybe I could join you guys sometime. His eyes? They're not smiling. You're welcome anytime. How about tomorrow, after school? Okay, but where? Right here. Something's fishy about him. I'd better get to the bottom of this. Okay, okay, wait a sec. So a guy comes in who shares your interests and charms the skirts off your two friends, and your comments on the matter are... His eyes. They're not smiling. I'd better get to the bottom of this. First off... What? Why would anyone notice something that subtle and minute? Is she the ghost detective? Because that's some pretty involved reading there, girly. And second, how low is your opinion of your friends that you can't believe a guy would actually want to hang out with you? What are you guys, all poor? Lesbians? Poor lesbians? Okay, so in the chaos of all this nonsense, we actually blew past the one important thing that happened. One of the ghost stories that they told was about this old school building, and it's actually where this story is going to take place. Apparently, every time they've tried to demolish the building, some crazy shit went down. Most famously, a teacher that committed suicide. So when they decided to build the new school, they started to tear down the old one. The demolition ended that day. Last year, they started the demolition again to make way for a new gymnasium, but a truck driving by lost control and crashed into a group of kids outside, killing some students. <laughs> well, I guess that is some pretty bizarre stuff, and awfully coincidental. Yeah, it's gotta be ghosts. Seems like the most logical conclusion. But that's actually less of a joke than you think. Keep that in mind for later. So the next day, Mai decides to idiot all over the place because seeing the building makes her believe the ghost stories. The more I look at this place, the more I believe the stories. Yeah, okay. I guess if the building exists, then there must be ghosts there. Anyway, she stumbles in and manages to I'm knock sorry. a bookcase on herself, only for Walter from Helsing to run in and save her at the last moment. Sadly, a poor helpless camera is brutally murdered in the process, which leads to this pleasant scenario. Lynn, what just happened? <laughs> is there a doctor close by? <laughs> There's a doctor just down the street from here! <sighs> no thanks. You've done enough already as it is. Wow, the Good Samaritan ain't got shit on this guy. Also, because this is Japan we're in, the only solution to this problem is indentured servitude. He's the assistant and I'm the boss. And now my assistant is stuck in bed. I believe it's up to you to take his place. Hey, now hold on just the a minute! The camera is broken. <sighs> Well, can't I just buy you a new one or something? It's quite expensive. Oh, then I don't know what to do. You can't afford to reimburse me for the damaged equipment, which means there's only one other course we can take. <sighs> You'll work off the debt as my assistant. Your assistant? Again, I have multiple problems with this. Oh, Christ, we're never going to get through this shit. All right. First of all, what do you mean there's no other option? Why don't you know what else to do? Go ask your fucking parents! Are you an orphan? Did both your parents leave you? Thanks, Japan. Second, why the hell would you want someone this clumsy working for you? The first time she even looked at your camera, it ended up killing itself. And that's not even mentioning the fact that this guy isn't a high school student, but actually owns his own company. What do you think, Will? Fuck, this is stupid. But anyway, remember how ghosts were the only option? Well, meet this crazy sack of crazy. Did you say ghost stories? Is that what you three do after school every day? Then no wonder I've had this headache for so long. So you're blaming us for that? 
Of course I am. Whenever you tell one of your little ghost stories, you attract low-level spirits, and they attract stronger spirits. So when you entertain yourselves with these stories, you're putting me at risk. Are you the one who put these girls up to telling these ridiculous ghost stories? If you're not psychic, then you wouldn't understand. Bitch be tripping balls. What the fuck are you doing? What the f Do you care about no one but yourself? What the shit? You know how much that makes my hair fall out. How is, how is that even possible? I'm sorry, are you a hair care professional now? Oh no, but... Well, then I guess you couldn't possibly understand. I just... I just don't even with this girl! What is this, an inquisition? Take some fucking aspirin! Or Advil! Or Tylenol! Something! If you're not psychic, then you wouldn't understand. What, are you gonna accuse them all of being witches next? Could you have picked a flimsier excuse? Oh, you were telling ghost stories? Well, that's why I have split ends. Burn them! If you're not psychic, then you wouldn't understand. Hey, could you maybe make some sense instead of regurgitating bogus rumors and claiming you just know? Do you have any reason to believe anything that you just shouted at everyone for? If you're not psychic, then you wouldn't understand. Bitch be tripping balls! So anyway, we've actually got a plot to tend to, if you can believe it. Kazuya talks about how everything that's happened actually has a real explanation, which is a freaking breath of fresh air after all these hormonal teenage girls. There was an accident where the roof collapsed prematurely. No workers died as a result, though five were injured in the incident, which was ultimately blamed on human error. A teacher did in fact commit suicide in the building, but that was explained in the suicide note left by the victim. The incident with the truck last year was a drunk driving accident. That's when construction was stopped for the last time. So after Mai scares herself like the moron she is and blames it all on Kazuya... Stop goofing off and get back to work. It's official. I hate him. Told ya. After that, she resolves to call him Naru for... Only the dumbest of reasons. So you think I'm handsome, huh? Uh, well, I mean, that's what all the girls at school are saying. Well, they have very good taste. I can't believe this guy! Sure, he may be good-looking and extremely successful at such a young age, but I've never seen a bigger narcissist in my life! From now on, your name is Naru. As in, Naru the Narcissist! Why are you so excited? Whatever, who cares? It's stupid. Moving on. The next day, a bunch of other people show up to help the investigation. There's Ayako. Shrine maiden. Takigawa. Since when were monks allowed to have long hair? <clears throat> Apostate? And... Oh, thank goodness you're all here. Oh, for fuck's sake. The souls of those trapped there have... Stop grandstanding. You're just looking for attention. Are you really that desperate for people to like you? Thank you. You know, it's pretty sad that having a grown woman say something that horrible to a high school freshman actually makes us happy. But man, is she intolerable. Mai tries to defend her, but we don't give a shit. Next on the Endless Spirit Train is John Brown. My name's John Brown, and I come from the great outback of Australia. I can't express how excited I am to join you. Mr. Brown is relatively new to our country. So wow, what a bunch of xenophobic assholes. <laughs> Actually, if someone came up and said they were from the great outback, I'd laugh at him too. Actually, this is probably the most frustrating thing about this show. We've got a 19-year-old exorcist, a 17-year-old CEO, another psychic girl who is barely an adult, and these two are probably in their mid-twenties at the oldest. But of course, they act way younger. For this entire first episode, the only character development that we're privy to is one big pissing contest over who's smarter, who's more professional, who's more legitimate, who's more right, who has the bigger dick, fucking whatever. Then the crazy high school bitch gets in on it too. And we're not talking about differing opinions, we're talking high school level name calling and slandering. It is fucking childish. The only reason she gets ratings is because she's pretty and wears that silly kimono. I was under the impression that only innocent virgins can become shrine maiden. Apostate? I wouldn't be so confident in your abilities. And annoying. 
It all comes to a head after some weird shit goes down, including a chair that moves on its own and a ceiling that just happens to collapse on them along with some shattering windows. Also, the real psychic girl almost falls to her death when she breaks right through a wall doing almost nothing. However, despite Naru saying that the room isn't structurally sound, old Johnny just goes right in and, in an attempt to pretend he's an exorcist, just starts reading out of the Bible. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word, it was God. Not surprisingly, the roof collapses and almost kills him. That night, Naru does a bunch of research and finds out that the building was built on a swamp and that one side of it is slowly sinking into the ground, compromising its structural stability. Of course, this sensibly explains why all the events up until that point have occurred. However, things like logic and facts confuse the poor irrational nutcase who flies into a rage, just as a poltergeist-like occurrence breaks out and threatens everyone in the room. Well, it's not like this has happened yet or anything. I wonder what our intrepid team of young experts and professionals have to say on the matter. It just goes to show that you can't depend too much on technology. For a minute there, I was actually about to believe you and your phony results. Maybe it's time someone went back to school. Hey, Will! How did you sleep last night? Well... Actually, now that you mention it, I woke up with a bunch of puncture wounds in my back mm -hmm. and... Blood everywhere. <laughs> That's oh! pretty funny, actually, because I threw a bunch of thumbtacks into your bed. I guess your mattress wasn't that good after all, was it? This is unreal. This is, this is seriously the shit we have to deal with. Naru showed you maps, historical documents, and real physical measurements that fully explained everything that happened. But now, for the first time yet, something actually on par with a haunting happened, and because you're all such childish fuckwads obsessed with proving that ghosts are involved, you immediately jump all over him and discredit him, and all the work that he's done has fucking solved his case! Fuck all of you. And it's a testament to the faith that the only one who doesn't immediately throw Naru under the bus is John Brown, the Catholic. He's just legitimately trying to figure out what's going on here. Well, I guess Mai doesn't turn bitch heel either, but it's still astonishing that we're supposed to put up with a bunch of leaking assholes who do nothing but spray their putrid drizzle over everyone else's attempts to succeed while they fail just as equally. Oh, speaking of Mai, I actually give her the most credit of anyone because she actually calls them out on their endless douchebaggery. Would you shut up? I am sick of this! You didn't get rid of them either, did you? After what you said to Naru, this makes you look so stupid! I don't remember Naru coming up with any lame excuses, do you? Unfortunately, her good sense is interrupted by the ghost, and as they run for their lives into the dark unknown, the episode ends. All right, well, let's go ahead and load up the next episode. Actually, that was already two episodes. Really? Yeah. I guess we just um, forgot to break them up. Whoops. Oh, I guess we were just having so much fun that we forgot to... I wouldn't continue watching this. One of the biggest problems that this show has is that all these characters are way too young. You've got a 17-year-old who owns his own company. What is this, Yu-Gi-Oh? Then you've got the 19-year-old ordained exorcist. Well, that's bullshit. What, did he start his training at age 10? Did he skip college and high school? We just have a bunch of idiots running around like idiots acting like idiots. Anyway, when the scares actually do pop up, I'm too annoyed and frustrated by it to even be scared. So maybe it gets better or scarier later on? but there's just not enough presented here for me to care. Well, in the name of giving you guys a good idea of whether or not this is worth your Halloween night, I'm gonna have to break the rules again because, well, I have seen this whole thing. This anime is basically a collection of ghost stories. It has no overarching plot or character development to speak of. However, this introduction to them, as annoying as it might be, is really just growing pains as they become a well-oiled machine later on, and the rest of the ghost stories are genuinely scary and well-told. 
the reason why I would recommend this show is because you could completely skip this first arc and watch any or all of the subsequent ones and just look the characters' names up on Wikipedia. You don't even have to watch them in order. So if you're looking for a quick two hours of scares and you don't have the days or the weeks it would take to watch the entire thing, then one of the stories in Ghost Hunt will most definitely get the job done for you. Well, I mean, I guess everything's out the fucking window now. What are you... You know what? I'm just trying to give people a good idea of what they should watch on Halloween. Yeah, Who cares? yeah, sure. Whatever, dude. We're only supposed to watch two episodes for this show. That's Who the format. Who gives a shit? Oh, fuck <laughs> you. Fine! Fine. Fine. You were supposed to show people horror. Scare them. Make them shrink into a corner. Instead, all I've seen you do is show worthless garbage. <laughs> Hold on, man. I'm, I'm telling you. Trust me, I got this. No. You don't. I'm calling the shots around here. And you'll review what I tell you. Death, now, now come on! You don't have to do this! Don't have to what? Make you do this right? Or remind you what terror actually is? <gasps> Take this mask off! <laughs> 